innovators, leaders, headliners. Join us as we meet the people behind the weather headlines. Ken Graham has devoted nearly three decades to serving the public, and now he's turning the page into his new role as director of the National Weather Service. We continue our conversation to see how technology is evolving weather forecasting and how to pass that along to the public. We're covering the entire nation, and our goal really is the same, that to protect people, protect property, uh, and technology is a key in all of yeah. that. And so what, how do you think the technology is going to be changing to help us in the future, especially in the very near future? We've got the new supercomputer. Yeah. You saw that. That's yeah. exciting. So we're going to be upgrading the models. But how do we get from, you know, you think about the synoptic, the, the larger picture, and we always talk about mesoscale, getting down to the storm. What about microscale? You know, you have a fire. How is that fire influencing the actual environment? Start getting to, to really getting to the lower, res, you know, a, a, a lower area, right? This yeah. high resolution thing where you're, you're really- Your own house, this. your, your own, own house. house, your own neighborhood. How do we do that? And, and you know, one of the, the leading causes of fatalities is water. We have to get to inundation mapping because you, you really look at it and we're working it. Yeah. We've got all sorts of big, the, the steps have been going. They're going that yes. way. We got to get there. We got to, if you think about it, what people want, they want to know what's going on where I'm standing. Everybody wants that. That's what they want. That's where we got to go. We got to figure that out and do it in a way with social science because a perfect forecast is fine and dandy, but unless it's understood and actionable, it doesn't do much good. Right. Yeah. Now you mentioned the supercomputer. So explain to people how the supercomputer is going to help us with our forecasting in the future. This thing's a, a fast computer. I mean, like, you know, 49 and 50th fastest computer on, on Earth type of thing. So it, it's going to help us computate the models quicker, right? So the more observations you can put in, we can put more data into it. And now we have the, the ability to take so much good yeah. data to put it into these models, it means the, the information is coming out better. And we're seeing that with forecasts for hurricane cones becoming yeah. smaller, yeah. meaning the error is, is starting to drop more. And we're also getting more confidence in the longer range of the forecast. Yeah. So talk about that part. Well, data is everything going in. And there's so much data that, that we still need to collect, oceans especially. We need more information over the oceans. And it's not just above the surface, it's the depth of that heat, the, whole, the total heat content of, of the ocean getting down to the models. Here's a good example. So the hurricane hunters, incredibly important to us, both at NOAA and the Air Force. And the data that we get from the hurricane hunters can make the models anywhere from 10 to 15% better in track. Listen to this. We've cut the error in intensity in half in the last three years. You got to get the data in and you need the compute power to be able to do that. That marriage, the marriage between that yeah. live data, you know, yeah. especially dropping the radio zones out into the storm system and then also getting it to the computers, yeah. getting it into the models. And so that seems to be improving and that, that's something very exciting to me as well. Meteorologists getting better data is critical to bringing more accurate information to the public. But what's also important is where you go to get information, especially when you're facing serious impacts. I think that that is as vital as yeah. your plan That's right. is who do you trust to get information from? Why do you think we've been so aggressive in the Weather Service and even the Hurricane Center, even personally, right. getting information out, social media, hundreds of interviews with you all mm -hmm. over the last four years or so, it's, it's, it's because we got to be on one page. And, and all the social science studies are very clear. If people get a mixed message, multiple messages, it impacts their decision making. They either won't make a decision, they'll freeze up, or, or potentially make the wrong decisions. But more often, no decision. We got to be on one page. And that's why we got to be so aggressive and together, share each other's information. And I think, my opinion, 28 years of doing this, I think we've never been this close. I, th I think I've never seen our community as a weather enterprise, I think is the, the best term, come together like, like we, we are now. And I think it's important because I think together we are saving lives. The downside of all that though, is that we're also competing against maybe some not as reliable yeah. sources or people who are downright just trying to stir things up. Yeah. Um, so how do we overcome that? Because that to me is one of the biggest detriments we have. We're in the middle of a hurricane yeah. and we have somebody putting out absolute false information yeah, on yeah. purpose. It's, yeah. not, it's not our good people, it's the people on the other side. Yeah. How do we combat that? I think people just got to realize not everything that they see is, is correct on the internet. There's, there's, you can put whatever you want out there. Follow your trusted source, your, your media. I, I just tell everybody, we're all together behind the scenes. Right. Your favorite media outlet, us at the Weather Service, all around NOAA, your emergency managers, your, your city and state officials, we're all together. 
We're briefing them as right. part of our impact-based decision support. We're briefing the emergency managers. Those evacuation decisions, not evacuate, to evacuate, it's all based on science. It's, right. it's interesting if you really look at it, it's based on science. Those are your sources, your main sources. And the other part we got to talk about too is, you know, look, my mom gets information a certain way. I get information a certain way. Yep. But I watch where my, my kids get information. It's different. And, and it, they're not going to sit through quite the length of information. They want it quicker. They want it on their phone. They want it through social media. And, and all of us adapting to, to get the information out to, for the equitability to make sure we get equal chance for everyone to get that information. Got to adapt. How do you take something that is extremely complicated and very scientific yeah. and make it meaningful to everybody. That's, that's the whole premise behind our impact-based decision support. And, and that's getting to those emergency managers. Those are the, you know, the elected officials, emergency managers, tough decisions. Think about it. Uh, evacuate Probably. a hospital, evacuate a city. A about, million people. And you know what we never talk about? The decision not to evacuate is a, a decision. It's hard. It's a tough, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. So we're there, we're interpreting that information. You take all this complex information and saying, this is what it really means. Hey, Ken, what do you really think? How many times you get that sort of thing? Uh, and it happens all the time. So how do you, how do you put some graphics? How do you put information that really um, interprets? So, so you have the hardcore science, which you got to have perfect. It's got to be a, do a great job. Right. And then you have the risk. You can turn that into impacts and you got decisions to save lives. See how it connects? Join us next time as Ken talks about knowing your risk. If you arm yourself with a plan, arm yourself with information, it's amazing how that'll keep you calm. And how you can prepare when dangerous weather strikes. Stay tuned to Weather Nation to hear the stories from those making waves in weather on the next Weather Headliners.